A base tank in any boss is an important role when done a certain way can make or break a kill. At AOD, there are many ways to base tank and I will show you one of those ways. I am JVP and this video will serve as a guide for those who want to learn how to mage base tank. As much as possible, your role is to keep Nex centered until her health reaches 600k. The mage base will help debuff Nex after the minions are lured and at the last phase. You will also have to help break some amalgamations. Once Nex reaches 600k health, you have to keep your team safe by luring Nex to the last pillar or wherever necessary. Added to all this, you must still continue to do damage on AOD. Nexus Mage hits are a few ticks slower than her almost instant melee hits. Camp melee prayer then if you see her change animation or notice the attack is a bit slower, change to mage and back to melee right after. At 600,000 HP and below, Nex will only hit you with mage unless it hasn't been phased. Starting out base tanking, you may need to combo eat often as Nex hits hard and often. Some mechanics can reset your defensive abilities. If you use a pack mammoth, you can eat solid food without adrenaline loss because of its feast ability scrolls. When done right, you can combo solid food, blue blubber jellyfish, and a saradomin brew or any potion. With this kind of combo, you can heal about half of your health. Start with max adrenaline and put mines at the crew war spot. At the start, I try to sync my Nat Instinct with Mage Umbra Archenner, build with basics, sunshine, build with defensives until almost max, and then concentrated blast as the last kill on the dummy. After that, I start the kill and charge up detonate. Sometimes you may have to apply Voon at the start when the team requests it. Note that the Umbra minion tank may also start the kill so that you can flank start, and if so, you must Voke after hitting with your flank. Do your best Sunshine DPS rotation, prioritizing the use of Gothic Staff first, then Wild Magic and Asphyxiate. Use Flank once Nex faces a different quadrant, going one north or south depending where she faces. For your position, you just start with one space between you and the starting orb. Go one north or south when Nex faces a quadrant for her element special attack. And go back after so as not to mess with the minion lure later. Warning, if no one stands at the quadrant that Nex faces, her enrage stacks increase, making it more difficult for you. If Nex is not phased quick enough after element special, three subsequent orbs that deal damage over time will spawn where everyone is standing. What I do when this happens to me is I leave the three orbs one south or north of me and then go back to the base spot. For phase 2, your duty is to charge, detonate, and release once amalgamations drop. Hit her with a wild magic, then dragon breath the glacis amalgamation, use chain and extra basics on the crew or amalgamation. Depending on the facing, allocate basics or thresholds on next or the amalgamation depending on the target's HP. So for your possession, you just stay at the same spot as you were earlier. For warning, you have to ensure that next still gets face soon, otherwise another elements or blood orb special will occur. Sunshine then Vuln only next and continue to DPS her while using AoEs like Detonate, Chain, and Dragon Breath to help clear minions. After that, just continue to DPS next until 600k. Take note of the order the minions died as that's what determines the order of how the pillars should be killed. Make sure to watch next, help, and prepare to lure by going opposite of the first pillar. For your smoke mechanic during this phase, the smoke mechanic will come out after two auto attacks but would only show the animation of the second one. It comes out at the same time as the third auto attack after you get the message for your smoke. For the east smoke, head 1 or 2 south or you can also go 2 north and declare E or east. Wait for an auto attack animation from next then head back to the base spot. For the north smoke, declare N or north wait for one auto attack animation then head to west so basically for east smoke leave it one or two south and then go back to the base spot for the north smoke leave it and then you move to west for the ice mechanic declare ice as soon as possible 
Once it pops, use your power burst of acceleration and bladed dive one north or south. If this happens later on when the next is about to be phased, start luring next to the opposite of where the first pillar is. If you haven't unlocked bladed dive surge, click on next then surge back. Make sure to only drink the power burst once it pops, otherwise ask for help from your teammates to break the ice. Phase 4 Luring Start by heading west if first pillar is Umbra or Glacis. East if first pillar is Cruor or Fumus. Then, while hugging the wall and utilizing surge and bladed dive, head to the last pillar. If Umbra is the last pillar and your team is not going for speed kills, you may want to lure next to an adjacent destroyed pillar. As if next hits reach your teammates, they will be susceptible to the pillar's mechanics and, more fatally, the shadow mechanics. When it comes to luring, you want to keep next at the spot where the reavers on phase 1 initially spawn. You can use defensives here to mitigate damage and hammer next with IOTH if the team is at the second or third pillar and sunshine and vuln when the team is at the third pillar. Help kill last pillar and then make sure that your team can flank next from the side or behind. If you get the bomb mechanics, simply leave the bombs by the arena center line so as to keep the last area safe and keep next from moving. For your familiar, you would want to have Mammoth, Yak, or War Tortoise. If you're comfortable without these extra healing tools, you can use a Reaper Demon or a Steel Titan. When using a Mammoth, put around 20 solid food in its initial inventory slots, then Bruise or Jellyfish for the rest of its slots to pick up later. For your abilities, you would want to have Bladed Dive and Double Surge for extra mobility as base. Corrupted Blast and Greater Chain for help with amalgamations and minions. In your gear, you would want to have an Inquisitor Staff for increased DPS. T80 Power Armor really helps is what I used when learning how to base. Having an Amulet of Souls or better, an EOF. It's nice, it's nice to have a Gothic Staff or a Spec in an EOF. Blast Diffusion Boots helps with transition damage. Rune Pouch to save inventory space. For your perks, aside from DPS perks, it helps to have Venom Blood and Mobile in your Switch. For your inventory, if you don't have a Venom Blood perk, it's good to have Anti-Poison or an extra Gothic's Rest. You need to have a good Shield, Excalibur and Ancient Elven Ritual Shard for constant prayer and HP. Your best overloads, 20 Mammoth Feast Scrolls if using a Mammoth, and a good combination of Bruise and Solid Food or Blue Blubber Jellyfish. For me, I think I use about 9 or so um, Saradome and Brew Flasks and a couple of Blue Blubber Jellyfish with one solid food for emergency. A sample of me doing Mage Base is in the description below. Well, that's it for this Mage Base guide. If you got a question about specifics, feel free to leave a comment below. If you learned something from this guide, leave a like. And if you'd like to see more RS related stuff, do subscribe.